Imagine, for a moment, a world engulfed in ash and darkness. What would happen if the Yellowstone supervolcano erupted today? Welcome to a journey into a potential future, one that may seem like the plot of a science fiction novel, but is in fact a reality that our planet has faced before and may face again. We're talking about the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano, a geologic giant that lies dormant beneath the picturesque landscapes of Yellowstone National Park in the United States. The Yellowstone volcano is no ordinary volcano, it is a supervolcano, a term reserved for volcanic eruptions of an unimaginable scale. The history of this supervolcano is etched into the Earth itself, with three notable eruptions that have occurred in the past two million years. Each eruption was a cataclysmic event that reshaped the landscape and dramatically affected the global climate. Now let's shift from the past to the present. Today, teams of scientists are constantly monitoring the Yellowstone supervolcano. They use a battery of instruments to measure the telltale signs of potential volcanic activity, seismic activity, ground deformation, gas emissions and temperature variations. But what exactly are they looking for? The answer lies in understanding the behavior of volcanoes. Increased seismic activity could indicate magma movement beneath the surface. Ground deformation might suggest that the magma chamber is filling up. Changes in gas emissions can point to changes in the magma itself. And temperature variations, particularly increases, can be a sign that an eruption is imminent. However, predicting the exact timing of a supervolcanic eruption is no small feat. Despite our best efforts and the use of cutting-edge technology, the inner workings of our planet remain largely unpredictable, and this is where the true threat lies. Given the unpredictability of Mother Nature, this catastrophe could be closer than we think. So, as we continue this exploration, remember to appreciate the calm before the potential storm, because the world as we know it could change in the blink of an eye. In the Picture this, a deafening explosion followed by an ash cloud that blankets the sky. This is the beginning of the end. In the immediate aftermath of the eruption, the landscape surrounding Yellowstone transforms into a vision of devastation. The explosion of an almost unimaginable scale sends an enormous ash cloud billowing into the atmosphere. This is not your average volcanic ash cloud, but rather a towering behemoth that can reach heights of over 25 miles. The sheer volume of ash released is enough to bury states like Wyoming, Montana and Idaho under several feet of ash. But the ash cloud is just the first of the cataclysms. The heat and force of the eruption could trigger a pyroclastic flow, a terrifying wall of gas and volcanic matter that sweeps across the landscape at hurricane speeds. Nothing in its path stands a chance. This pyroclastic flow, capable of lasting for several hours, would incinerate, bury or obliterate everything within a hundred mile radius. The immediate damage to the surrounding areas would be catastrophic. Entire cities and towns in the vicinity would be wiped off the map. Infrastructure, from highways to power lines, would be destroyed. The loss of life, while hard to estimate, would likely be in the thousands, if not higher. And yet, the devastation doesn't stop there. The ash cloud, now spreading across the continent, would wreak havoc on air travel and could lead to the collapse of roofs under its weight. The particulates in the ash could contaminate water supplies and damage machinery. The fallout from this eruption would touch every aspect of society, from agriculture to healthcare, from transportation to communication. Even as the initial shock of the eruption begins to fade, the world would find itself grappling with a new reality. A reality where the day turns into night, where the air is thick with ash and where the ground beneath our feet is forever scarred by this catastrophic event. In the blink of an eye, our world would be transformed into an apocalyptic landscape. Uh, but the devastation would not stop there. The effects would ripple out, touching every corner of the globe. Picture the ash cloud from the eruption, a monstrous plume reaching high into the stratosphere. This isn't just a darkened sky for those in the vicinity of Yellowstone, it's a global shroud. The sunlight that warms our planet and nurtures our crops would be blocked, plunging the world into a volcanic winter. Temperatures would plummet, and weather patterns would become erratic and unpredictable. This isn't science fiction, it's a harsh reality we'd face in the wake of such an eruption. The chilling effect on our planet would be catastrophic. The cold and darkness would lead to widespread crop failure. Our food supply chains would crumble, leaving supermarket shelves bare and stomachs empty. We're talking about a potential global famine, one that could last for years. 
And let's not forget the economic repercussions. The ash fallout would play havoc with our infrastructure. Roads, railways, airports, all would be impacted, leading to an abrupt halt in global trade. Industries would collapse, jobs would be lost, and economies would plummet into recession or even depression. The financial shockwaves would be felt by everyone from the wealthiest tycoon to the humblest worker. But it doesn't end there. The health implications are also alarming. Breathing in volcanic ash could lead to severe respiratory problems. Even our water supplies could be contaminated, increasing the risk of disease. Hospitals and medical facilities already burdened by the immediate aftermath of the eruption would struggle to cope with this additional demand. And what of our technology, our satellites in space? The ash cloud could interfere with their functioning, disrupting communication networks and causing widespread blackouts. In this interconnected age, the loss of internet and telecommunications would be a severe blow, further isolating us in a time of crisis. This cataclysmic event would change life as we know it, plunging us into a new dark age. In the wake of this disaster, humanity would be left to pick up the pieces. The dust may have settled, but the world is irrevocably altered. The long-term effects of the Yellowstone supervolcano eruption are nothing short of apocalyptic. The skies, once blue, are now a perpetual grey, the sun's rays barely piercing the dense layer of ash. This ash, a silent killer, infiltrates water supplies, crops and even the air we breathe, causing health issues on an unprecedented scale. The recovery process, if we can call it that, is slow and gruelling. Infrastructure is decimated, resources are scarce, and the once thriving cities are now ghost towns, their inhabitants either perished or displaced. The very fabric of our society is threatened as we try to navigate through this new world. The potential for societal collapse is very real. Systems we've come to rely on, food production, healthcare, transportation, are all but eradicated. The world has been thrown into a perpetual winter with temperatures plummeting due to the blocked sunlight. Survival becomes the primary concern, overshadowing the niceties of civilization we once took for granted. Yet in this bleak landscape, humanity shows its true colors. We are a species of survivors, adapters. We find ways to cope, to rebuild, to sustain. From the ashes, new societies might rise, ones that are more resilient, more adaptable to the harsh realities of the post-eruption world. We might see the rise of underground cities, the development of new farming techniques for ash-ridden soil, and a shift towards a more community-based society. We may learn to harness the geothermal energy from the very force that caused our downfall. We are not passive victims of our environment. We shape it, mold it, bend it to our will. We are the architects of our own destiny. Even when faced with the most daunting of challenges, we rise, we rebuild, we endure. In the face of such adversity, our resilience would be tested like never before. So what are we doing to prevent a catastrophe of this scale? As humans, our instinct is not just to survive, but to understand, adapt and prepare. Let's explore the rigorous measures that the scientific community is undertaking to prevent or mitigate the hypothetical eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. To start with, an array of monitoring systems are in place. Seismic networks map the underground magma chamber, GPS monitors ground deformation, and gas emission sensors help us understand changes in the underground systems. This information is invaluable in predicting any potential eruption. The constant vigilance of these monitoring systems exemplifies our efforts to outsmart nature's fury. Moving on, research efforts to understand volcanoes are in full swing. Scientists are studying the history and behaviors of past eruptions, drilling into these sleeping giants to understand their complex nature. The aim is to paint a clearer picture of the cause and effect of super eruptions, thereby enabling us to devise more effective preventive strategies. And it doesn't stop there. The scientific community is continually exploring potential solutions to prevent or at least reduce the damage caused by an eruption. Some of these range from seemingly far-fetched ideas like drilling into the volcano to release pressure slowly, to more feasible plans like improving our evacuation and disaster management systems. A disaster of this magnitude demands us to prioritize scientific advancements and research over wealth and power. 
In essence, the focus is not just about surviving the super eruption, but preventing it from happening in the first place. It's about turning a potential catastrophe into a catalyst for scientific progress, using our understanding and innovation to mitigate the threat in face of potential devastation. We find the strength to research, innovate, and ultimately prevent. And remember, we are in this together.